The views and opinions expressed on this program do not reflect the company, owners, management, staff, clients, or partners. It's Monday, the first day of April 2024. Welcome to Bermuda's Daily Talk Show. It's the daily hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medical Health Splendos, and People's Pharmacy. I'm Jamal Hartman, and Maya Palacio will be with us in a bit to bring you the latest in her news break brought to you by People's. Well, everyone should be a few pounds heavier after all those pop cross buns. I almost said coffee rolls. Um, don't lose that Bermuda card, Jamal hot cross buns and fish cakes um i'll let some other people tell you but i saw some people made their own fish cakes this weekend i'm not man i didn't make any i i was um so i i was gonna try some with some fish else other than um codfish and then i forgot the potatoes so i just didn't bother so that's my excuse as to why i didn't have any this year but i i I would love to know how everyone who made fish cakes, especially those for the first time, how you made it out. Well, not you, but how did the people who ate them, yeah, how they make out? Yeah, so, you know, yeah, I uh, envy with envy. No, I'm not envy. I was celebrating the fact that so many of you enjoyed making your fish cakes and hot cross buns and you know, keeping traditions alive uh, the Bermudian way. Um, Tanya Cheeseman says, uh, morning, Jamal. Happy Easter Monday. And the same to you, Tanya Cheeseman. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. Um, Suzanne Ingham says, awesome Monday, Jamal and Maya. And uh, Suzanne Ingham says, that's okay, Jamal. Make them another day. It's okay. Yeah. Well, there was a little debate on um, online where someone said to a tourist, uh, oh, you basically, you can only get fish cakes um during the easter holiday unless you know a portuguese family or something like that i'm just like huh i i mean i know that we hot cross buns and fish cakes during good friday easter but i'm like in my black family we had fish cakes year round you know when we felt like fish cakes so interesting debate there um but anyway Hope you all had a great weekend, as I stated. Greetings, everyone. Thanks for making us part of your daily routine. A good one today as we discuss what Bermuda Air's new routes mean for Bermuda and what other routes can pe uh, attract people to the island. So give that some thought. Uh, the daily players are who said it today. So as you can see, I have no co-host. So someone's going to be eligible to win a prize. And I just want to remind your audience that you must be tuned in um, or someone must tell you that you've won the prize because um, you've got 24 hours to send us an email. And unfortunately, the person who won on Friday was not tuned in. Sorry, won on Thursday was not tuned in when their name was called and they didn't send the prize. So that's how it works. You've got to tune in. That's the whole purpose of the giveaway. All right. Just that's your reminder. Um, don't forget to subscribe on our website, follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. But we've got a birthday in the audience too, don't we? Um, Sandra is just, 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 just having a birthday. I don't, I'm not going to age her like I would Sherry. I'm not going to do that too. But Sandra, please give Sancha a warm, happy birthday audience. Let her know that she's loved and appreciated and um, she's not as old as Sherry. But uh, she's getting there, all right? So let's let's find Sancho's birthday music. Yeah, I think she likes that one. Let's give her a little birthday shout. So happy birthday. If you see Sancho, reminder that she's getting us all to share it, right? Um, and um, we're wishing her a very happy birthday. 
Oh, you've got somebody in the audience um, saying happy birthday, Sancho. Uh, love you so much more than Jamal. Well, you, you never love me anyway, Sherry. <laughs> you know, we, we, we know how you feel about me. I'm, I'm not going to tell the audience the sign language you usually give me off, off the um, off the air. But uh, we have another big announcement. Uh, we have another announcement this morning. So, um, you know, we, as of um, April 1st, which is today, uh, no April Fool's jokes on this show, folks. I don't know if you guys do that stuff, but no April Fool's jokes. Um, but we have new partners, um, Friesen Brook. Welcome, Friesen Brook, to the family and um, Noah's Ark. So uh, if you see the thumbnail, we now have, I believe, a total of nine partners. We have the BAC Group, which, which is our title sponsor, Medical House, Lindos, uh, People's Pharmacy, uh, NMAC, uh, Mailboxes, uh, Bermuda Trivia, and now uh, Noah's Ark and uh, Friesen Brook. So because of your support, we're able to continue growing and um, have these important community conversations. So thank you all for your support and um, welcome to Friesen Brook and um, Noah's Ark. Also, obviously, BDC is a partner as well. So yeah, we're moving along, folks. All right, well, let's jump into today's conversation. Um, as you are likely aware, Maya announced, uh, we spoke about it, um, Bermuda Air has been announced in uh, different routes. Um, the uh, Bermuda-based airline launched last September uh, with flights to uh, New York's Westchester and uh, Boston, and then Fort Lauderdale. And in the new year, there were announcements uh, for Baltimore and Orlando, which kicked off in March last month. And then last week, it was announced that they'll also be going to Halifax and Toronto. So, um, you know, first of all, big props to the airline, um, big props to uh, uh, um, Bermuda Air for their uh, growth, their, their, their growth and um, offering more options to Bermuda, um, to the island of Bermuda, which we hope only benefits. So the question of the morning is how do you believe Bermuda Air's new routes benefit Bermuda? How do you believe the new routes benefit Bermuda? But before we get there, um, by a hand, show of hands, yes or no, has anyone flown Bermuda Air as of yet? Yes or no? Yes, if you have, no, if you haven't, but just want get, to get a gauge of the audience. Has anyone flown on Bermuda Air yet? Yes or no? Have you, have you flown on Bermuda Air yet? Yes or no? Let us know. Yes or no? Have you flown Bermuda Air yet? As of yet? Um, I've flown it, I think, three times. I think I've flown it, yeah, three times. Only once leaving Bermuda. Uh, Karen Simmons says yes. Uh, she's flown it. Uh, Suzanne Ingham says no. Um, NTS says no. Tanya Cheeseman says no. Uh, Rosetta Severn says not yet. Emily Gale Dill says yes. Uh, Pamela Wyatt says no. Helen Swan says no. Uh, Stacey Ann Brown says no. Uh, Marquita Lee says not yet. And Manuela John says no, not yet. Uh, Charles H. Jeffs II says yes. So Bermuda Air, um, Adam, Scott, your team, you've got some work to do with the uh, TDH community. Um, because I'll ask the same question of everyone that said no just now. Have you flown since Bermuda, Bermuda Air launched in September? Yes or no? Have you flown? Have you taken a flight somewhere since Bermuda Air launched? Yes or no? That's a separate question. Have you taken up? Let us know. Have you flown but taken a separate airline? Yes. And Tanya Cheeseman says yes. Um, NTS says yes. Res uh, Definitely, Hedley and Swan says. Rosetta Severn, yes. Uh, Marquita Lee says no. So, so far, of everyone that says no, only one person hasn't flown. So, uh, Bermuda Air, we've got some work to do. We've got some work to do um, with the TDH community because they love to travel, it seems. They just haven't been given the, uh, I guess, they haven't uh, been given a reason to take Bermuda Air. Uh, all right, so let's jump into today's question. Um, the question again is, uh, how do you believe Bermuda's new routes benefit Bermuda? Like, how do you, their, their new routes, obviously they started flying into Baltimore and Orlando last month, 
as of uh, May, they'll be going into Toronto and Halifax, according to news. Um, they already were into uh, Fort Lauderdale, Boston, and Westchester. But the question of the morning is, how do you believe Bermuda Air's new routes benefit Bermuda? But before we answer that, answer this as well. Which of Bermuda Air's routes do you believe is the most beneficial for Bermuda right now? So of the, of the ones that exist, uh, Westchester, Boston, Fort Lauderdale, um, Baltimore and Orlando, which of those do you think or do you believe benefit Bermuda most currently? Which of those do you believe benefit Bermuda most currently? Which, which of those routes? Uh, Westchester, Boston, um, Fort Lauderdale, Baltimore, or Orlando? Which of those uh, routes do you believe uh, benefit Bermuda most? Which of those Bermuda routes do you believe benefit from you the most? Uh, Charles H. Jeffs II says, while I'm excited for the new routes, I sincerely hope it isn't too much too fast. Um, yeah, I actually had someone reach out to me um, this past uh, weekend just saying, I hope they're not um, doing too much too soon. Um, I, I, I always say this, I want it to work, I support it. Um, I don't, I'm not in the rooms. Um, when decisions are being made. So I don't know the data that they're using or the information, the marketing behind what they're doing. So, uh, but I, I take that point, um, Charles. Uh, all right, which of Bermuda Air's uh, routes do you believe is the most beneficial for Bermuda? Which of Bermuda Air's routes do you believe is the most beneficial for Bermuda at Corn? Um, Tanya Cheeseman is cheating, she gave three. She says Baltimore, Boston, Fort Lauderdale. Um, she thinks the most beneficial. Um, Stacey Ann Brown says uh, Orlando and Fort Lauderdale. Um, we've got uh, Boston, says Emily Gildeal. Um, Karen Simmons says Boston and Baltimore. Uh, Pamela Waits says Baltimore. Uh, Suzanne Ingham says uh, Boston. And Helene Swan says a direct flight to Jamaica would be most beneficial. Um, which of Bermuda Air's uh, routes do you believe is the most beneficial for Bermuda? So notice the question saying Bermuda, not Bermudians. And what, what we mean by that is which one's going to get the people who, now Sancho always says, I don't know who we're targeting, I think is a fair question as, as a destination. But the question is really which of these routes do you believe is going to attract the people, the right people to Bermuda? That's the question. So it's not about what's beneficial uh, for Bermudians, like where Bermudians want to travel. That's we just don't have the volume for that. But which of Bermuda's routes do you believe is the most beneficial for Bermuda? So where do you think, um, you know, people are going to come from that will, will benefit Bermuda most? What are your thoughts on that? Um, Renee Simmons says they need a flight to LaGuardia or JFK. Well, I thought the whole purpose of going to Westchester is so that people who are in the city don't have to drive all the way out to JFK. Um, I thought that was, you know, what was behind it. Also, I thought Westchester was to uh, really get people from Connecticut that don't want to go to either JFK or um, LaGuardia. So I, I, again, I'm not in the rooms when decisions are being made. I am. I know probably as much as uh, the layman just speaking from someone who likely worked in that space. Um, again, which which of Bermuda's routes do you believe is most beneficial for Bermuda? Um, Tanya Cheeseman says, oh, well, Fort Lauderdale. Um, Rick Olson says New York, and I think that's that's where I will stick. I think New York's route is probably most beneficial for Bermuda. Um, it's the largest city in the United States. <laughs> so. Um, it makes sense, but I think the idea is to catch people um, from, you know, Southern Connecticut, like Stanford area as well. But I do believe that that is probably the most beneficial route for Bermuda. Um, and I think the way to think of that, folks, is which region has always had the most flights to Bermuda, right? It's always been that New York um, area, whether it's Newark, uh, LaGuardia, or JFK. I think this summer we may have all four, right? Westchester, Newark, JFK, and um, uh, LaGuardia. So that's probably, and again, this is my opinion based on just my uh, um, experience in that space, but I would definitely say the most beneficial route that uh, Bermuda Air currently has for Bermuda is um, the New York area. 
Um, all right, so question of the morning is, how do you believe Bermuda's new roots benefit Bermuda? So you've said that you believe uh, Fort Lauderdale, some of you. Well, how do they benefit Bermuda? How, do, how does Fort Lauderdale benefit Bermuda? Um, how do you think that these new roots benefit Bermuda? Um, Renee Simmons says, uh, business people need the city. Um, and then uh, Charles H. Jeffs II says, the uh, Baltimore route, uh, we're not going to do abbreviations. People don't know what that means, Charles. Um, the Baltimore route could eventually be the most beneficial as the DMV. Again, people don't know what DMV means. Um, that means DC, Maryland, Virginia folks, is where uh, most associations are headquartered. Um, and if we want to attract meetings and conventions, a direct flight is helpful. Um, I would agree with Charles um, that the DC area is heavy with the association market. And if you ever, you know, if you've never watched this show before, you will understand that what we always say, what drives tourism is groups. Um, groups are corporate meetings and associations. Um, the, you want that direct market because many of them are headquartered in that area. So I definitely agree that the DC market, if Bermuda is to return or try to uh, attract that group and association business, that direct flight to um, Baltimore, just that area, DC area uh, is helpful. All right. Um, Rick Olson says Boston a close second. Yeah, I think um, New York and Boston from a leisure perspective are huge, um, important routes, um, extremely important routes. Uh, Brian uh, Richen says when Westchester has been canceled. Um, has it been canceled? Didn't they have two flights there? Are you sure, Brian? Um, let us know. Um, Cecil O'Connor says we need a route that will open the Midwest to us. Well, thank you for saying that. I want to I'm touching on that. So I remember when I was working in Bermuda tourism and I would go to the Midwest, um, in particular Minneapolis, and people would say, well, why are you going to Minneapolis? Like, what, 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 why would people from Minneapolis come to Bermuda? Well, that's where the incentive market, um, incentive houses were. Uh, the incentive houses are, you know, they're the companies that really drive a uh, group business, right? So, you know, let's say a uh, U.S. bank is looking for somewhere to take their top salespeople. While the incentive houses are the ones that you negotiate with and uh, you know help choose Bermuda as that destination uh, to bring people, so I definitely agree um, with you, uh, Cecil O'Connor, that um, Chicago, the I believe it's still the third largest city in the United States. Um, you know, we've people have been saying for years in the industry Bermuda needs a flight, you know, between Bermuda and Chicago again. It's been spoken about, but nothing has come out of it. Um, so, yeah, I, I think many would agree with you. Um, what are your thoughts, audience? Let us know. How do you believe Bermuda's uh, new routes uh, benefit Bermuda? Let us know in the audience. Um, Brian Richard says Baltimore and Boston equals medical. This is not about Bermudians, um, though, Brian. This is about how do these ben uh, flights benefit Bermuda? Um, I'm trying to get us to think differently because... This is why airlines don't really travel to Bermuda. They're not thinking about Bermudians. We don't have possess enough people um, for volume. That's why they'll say, well, why are we going to come to Bermuda? We could go to Dominican Republic. That stuff probably is very low on the mind of most airlines, the needs of Bermudians. The question of the morning is, how do you believe Bermuda's new routes benefit Bermuda? So when we're talking about Bermuda, Bermuda, where did the business people come from? Where are they located? How are they... Are they in Fort Lauderdale? Are they in Boston? Are they in New York? Are they in Orlando? As far as tourists, are we really trying to attract tourists from Orlando? Are we? Is it a great um, connecting market? Or are we trying to attract tourists from Boston and New York? That That's the purpose of the question. It's how do you believe Bermuda's new routes benefit Bermuda, like the economy? Are... Um, are economy from a standpoint of um, our main market, which is insurance reinsurance or tourism. All right. Let us know. Think about it. Give it some thought. Um, Cecil O'Connor says Westchester has not been canceled. They dropped one of the flights as they flew there two times a day. That's what I thought. Thank you for that clarification, uh, Cecil. It's like they definitely um, just dropped one. But unless I missed Maya's uh, news break, they didn't um, eliminate two. Um, Cecil O'Connor says, uh, yes, when I worked at American Airlines, they flew from Chicago, but uh, back then the numbers couldn't work. 
maybe two, three times a week may work. Yeah, it doesn't have to be daily, right? We don't need necessarily daily flights. Um, you know, two, three times a week based on demand, right? I, I think one, one of the things we have to understand is um, economics, right? Supply, demand versus all wants, right? Versus all wants. Uh, we, we have to focus on supply and demand. I don't think we think like that <laughs> unless we actually have a business, which is incredible. Um, Charles H. Duff II says, over the years, um, DC, Maryland, Virginia, uh, was a top five originating area for Bermuda arrivals. That was without a year on flight, direct flight. Hopefully it will translate to even more. Yes, Charles, I'm with you, man. I really hope so. Um, Rick Olson says, I believe the incentive business is key to rebuilding tourism numbers, but due to the lack of activities, entertainment and convention style hotels, we are wasting our time and money. You know, Rick um, makes a great point. And again, if you don't know what incentive uh, business is, um, so incentive business is basically saying, um, you know, top insurance company is looking for a place to take their top 50 salespeople to celebrate, right? Where they usually spend three, three or five days, um, different activities. They could be, um, what's that gliding through the forest thing they do, um, ATVs, team building um, exercises. They also give them money to spend on the trip, different dinners, award dinners, all that stuff, right? Um, so that's incentive. Um, well, Rick makes a great point here. Um, it is a key to building, uh, rebuilding Bermuda tourism, like incentive business is key. But Bermuda has to have the activities. Bermuda has to have the entertainment. And, um, you know, we don't really have convention style hotels. I mean, you have uh, Hamilton Princess right now, right? That is open. Uh, Rose will talk us point, doesn't really have that kind of space. Right, they have smaller um, meeting rooms, so it, it's it's a challenge for Bermuda. If you understand the market, you would understand the challenge. You know, it's 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 a challenge for Bermuda. You know, we can't uh, sell what we don't have, right? You know, um, Ray Kai says uh, Bermuda is slowly increasing the profile of the country while it's bringing in much needed U.S. dollars. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that's that's a positive. You know. I'm on LinkedIn, folks, and every couple of days there's an article about Bermuda Air. And, uh, you know, every article that Bermuda Air appears in an, a new article, every every time Bermuda Air appears in a new article, it's an opportunity and exposure for Bermuda as a country. So I think that they've done incredible things already for the island. I'm really looking forward to seeing um, how this exposure uh, translates to um, success long term. Um, what, what else, folks? How, how do you believe Bermuda's new routes can benefit uh, Bermuda? Um, Suzanne Ingham says, I think Georgia would be very much like good too. I just re send, send that to me again, just so I can understand it, uh, Suzanne. All right, Kai says, uh, can we make a petition to change its name from Bermuda Air to Bermuda Air? <laughs> I know that, that's been a debate. That's been a de debate. Folks are like, um, I saw something on Twitter. Was, was it Frigier? Fr Frigidaire or something like that? People were comparing it to. Um, we, we'll have to ask. Maybe Bermuda Air was trademarked or someone already had it. So they went with Bermuda Air. I, I don't know. Um, that's that's an interesting question. But I know people have the, uh, you, you have people who just refuse to call it Bermuda Air. To them, it will be Bermuda Air. It's two words. They will not call it Bermuda Air. Um, that's on them, but I know that has caused quite a debate. But maybe we'll send an email to Adam Scott, the uh, CEO, to kind of got, get some sort of explanation as to uh, why uh, it is one word, Bermuda Air versus uh, Bermuda Air. All right. Um, what else, folks? How do you believe Bermuda Air's new routes benefit Bermuda? Um, any any thoughts on, I mean, Orlando? You know, how, do, how does Orlando benefit Bermuda? And the upcoming routes, we've got... Halifax and Toronto. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, Toronto is within the top five largest cities in North America. So I think, you know, from a business perspective, um, Toronto definitely makes sense as well. So um, I think that's a good route and good choice. Uh, Charles H. Jeffs II says, I take Rick's point, but uh, we can't wait until Fremont of Hampton is open to start promoting the island to decision makers. Often there's decisions are made years in advance. Well, yeah, um, I think what, 18 months to three years, 
Um, well, it changes. So I, I don't know what it is today, but people usually book incentive and group trips uh, years out. So I, to, to, to Charles's point, but I don't think, I mean, I, I, I take what you're saying, Charles. Um, and I think, you know, as Rick said, it's key to rebuilding tourism. Um, it's it's a it's a it's a tough one, folks. Because, hmm, do you take burgers off the menu because you had a beef this week, or do you leave it there knowing you'll have beef again next week? Think about the cost of changing the menu just for a week. However, Charles, I mean, are we being naive or hopeful in thinking Fremont Southampton will be reopened within the next three years? I mean. They showed us some pictures a couple months ago of some workers. I mean, you know, you know, pose for the camera, folks, right? But do we truly know whether there's consistent work going on up there? I don't know. I haven't been there. Um, but do we know whether there's consistent work that's actually taking place up at Fairmont Southampton? Um, all right, so <laughs> we've got sorry instagram i've been ignoring you um let, let's go to instagram we've got quite a few comments uh maven 26 is a, i look forward to taking the uh toronto route hopefully prices are fair boston to all the medical support so he's speaking about remedians um boston especially for those comments the hot well again this is about um bermuda not bermudians so let me just clarify um want people to understand the difference between the two. All right, let's bring um, Maya in. It's time for the Daily Hour news break um, for um, today. So uh, she's probably got some good stuff. And when we come back, folks, when we come back from this break, we'll talk about what other routes should Bermuda Air consider for Bermuda that um, could help Bermuda uh, going forward. All right, we'll talk about that. Uh, going forward. All right, let's bring in Maya Palacio for the Daily Hour News Break. Good morning, good morning. Well, good morning, MP. How are you? Honestly, feeling really good this morning. First day of the month of April, you know, Sanchez's birthday. It's also my mama's birthday, so a lot of Aries, and I love it. Oh, really? <laughs> It's, 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 so when is, when is your mom's birthday? Today as well, April 1st. Did, I didn't know that, Maya. I know. I, I, I say, uh, uh, I, so, and yours is coming up. So what, what do you call you, what do you call you guys? We're Aries. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't know. It was so Aries in March too. They, they open up the month. <laughs> oh, you claim them? Yes, we claim them. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, so, um. You got any hot plans for your birthday this year? We'll talk about that. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, folks, you know, I mean, she didn't invite me to her party last year, so I had to have one for her. Yeah. All right. So any thoughts on this morning's topic? Well, yeah, actually, uh, just to clarify and just to clarify a little bit of things about Bermuda's increasing network. So the connections are Boston, Westchester, Fort Lauderdale, Baltimore, Washington, Orlando, and now the two major cities in Canada, which is Toronto and Halifax. So you see the starting routes there for when they are going to be traveling to Toronto starting May 17th and Halifax starting May 25th. And you could expect some really, really good deals right now for those times if you wish to go in and look for them. So a spokesperson did say that Toronto, Canada's largest city, is a bustling map metropolis with strong economic ties to Bermuda, while Halifax, recognized for its rich history and strategic importance in the Atlantic region, shares historical, cultural, and commercial connections with Bermuda. The new routes are poised to become vital links that foster increased tourism and business exchange between the two countries. Now, Adam Scott, the, the founder uh, of C and CEO of Bermuda Air, said, quote, Toronto and Halifax are currently underserved, and this expansion aligns with our mission to provide year-round service, meeting the needs of both Bermudians and travelers from Canada. And a little added information there is that Toronto is the most populous city in Canada and the capital city of, Can of Canadian province of Ontario, with is which has a population size of 2.79 million since 2021 mm -hmm. and the fourth most populous city in North America as well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, yeah. I, I mean, it makes sense. I, I love it. And I'm, I'm happy for all the Maple Leafs or Canucks. What, what do they call Canadians? Don't they have like a nickname, Canucks or something like that? Or is that just people who are on the West Coast? 
maybe it's some Canadians, but not out here in Toronto. Oh, I haven't oh, read that one. Yeah, it's, I mean, they gotta have a name. Maya, come on. So on to, we literally, I literally call these our Torontonians. Like, I laugh about that joke all the time. Oh, Bobby, Bobby's from Toronto. She said, Yeah, Toronto. see, Torontonians. Okay. All right, Torontonians. Um, now, Maya, you haven't, um, um, like, booked your ticket to Bermuda on like Bermuda Air yet, have you? No, but when I tell you, I'm, <laughs> I'm probably about to be a loyal customer now. Yeah. Because, yeah. Okay. It's really uh, good news. You ready for a joke of the day? You said there was going to be no joke. You don't do April Fool's jokes. You said that. It's not fair. <laughs> That's a <your> joke. <laughs> I love it. I got you, didn't I? No, no you didn't because I knew you were trying to be like. Oh, okay. Um, it's okay. No. It's, it's, it's okay. I, 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 I got you. I got you. Everybody got it. But um, somebody did say Canucks in the audience. We're, we're going to settle okay. this. I'm going to go Canadian. Bob is a Canadian. I'm going to go Canadian. But I want you to answer this question before you go. Um, the, um, but then when we come back after the news break, I'm going to ask the audience, what are the routes? And I know everybody's like, um, what's that place where everyone goes? Not is, um, England, shucks, England. I remember talking about England. <laughs> Some, I, I couldn't get it out. England and Atlanta, two routes that people have been talking about. But I, I want to see if anyone got any other routes that would be beneficial for Bermuda. Like, I, I think, when I say, do you get what I mean when I say beneficial for Bermuda? Yes, I, I, I you cleared it up. I understand okay. what you mean. I guess we are not that popular, so it's not, not really about us, not really about what we want as Bermudians uh, mm -hmm. in terms of traveling, but what will be beneficial for our countries in terms of getting more people here, more business here, you know, more roots here that will help like sustain us, whether it be tourists or more, any other type of economic growth. Yeah, yeah, that's that simple. All right, what you got in today's uh, daily news break for us? All right, well, good morning. Good morning, everyone. This is your daily Our News Break brought to you by the great people at People's Pharmacy. So starting out, I guess we call this kind of really good news to hear because as the Easter weekend ends, the Bermuda Police Service reminds us that although last week's night's um, roadside sobriety checkpoints are at an end, they'll still be continuing to do those individual um, you know, checking and making sure that people's speeds remain in place. However, they want to announce that there were several events put on over the weekend and they happened to report that there were no calls for police intervention or assistance at any of these gatherings. So good news there for the Easter weekend. Yeah, um, it's crazy we're celebrating this, but it is a good celebration. Mm -hmm. and I, um, I am happy about it. Yep. Yeah, I, more people out there on a regular basis, not just when it's a holiday. Mm, indeed. Next up, coming up, I think we all know this from last week, but just to confirm, the C-10 by-election date has not been announced yet, so we're not there quite yet, but we do now have the competing names for Smith's North seat. For the OBA, it is Robert King, and for PLP, it is Lindsay Simmons, who will be going for the constituency, which, as we know, was held by Michael Dunkley, who, has, who had his last day as a politician yesterday, March 31st, and who kept that Smith's North for decades. So once again, it is a strong um, OBA position indeed, uh, similar to the previous by-election that we saw for C8. When is this by election? We don't know yet. That has not been announced. Hmm. Huh. Do not rule out an election being cold, is all I'm saying. I'm mm. not saying it will be. Uh, audience, pay attention. Wake up. Do not rule out an election being cold. Didn't I tell you that Lindsey Simmons would likely be the candidate for the PLP? Do yes, not did. rule out, do not rule out your premier, Colne, if he believes, if David Burt believes there's a chance, like he did in 2020, an election will be called if he believes there's a chance. Let me just put that there. All right. That is true. That is still a uh, possibility that could happen. So again, yeah, look out for that. Interested to see where that move will be next. I'm sure everyone on the island is. Well, in other news, the Honorable Tene Ferber did discuss some initiatives last week that will be supported in her budget for her ministry, the Youth Social Development and Seniors. Uh, here's just three of them that she mentioned that might be really interesting to learn about, I know. $120,000 will continue the implementation of a structured decision-making tool that puts in place protective measures for Bermuda's seniors, 
and persons with disabilities who are at risk of abuse or neglect. $50,000 will extend the Dementia Care Services pilot program for another six months. $630,000 has been allocated for the Department of Financial Assistance to roll out for the first time a short-term relief benefit program for persons who find themselves in financial economic hardship. Okay, I have nothing to say. All right, and now moving on to sports, it's a big sports uh, coming up and we all know that the Quifter is going on right now. Last week, I didn't really have a picture for you guys, but those are the 19 athletes that we have for Team Bermuda right now, competing for track and aquatics. So really a good luck to them. What we have as the update right now uh, in your Quifter update for the swimmers, Connor Hutman. Connor Hutman actually got a gold captured that at the championships in Bahamas. Hutman is 14, and he claimed victory in the 13 to 14 boys 50-meter backstroke, uh, dropping a personal best of his, finishing 28-33. So big up to Connor for securing that gold congratulations yeah thanks for keeping us up to date with that where, where can people like what watch it is it like stream the crypto streams online or something it does stream live i have to get that link for you guys i'll try to put it for tomorrow's news break uh we also did claim another gold though madeline moore who i believe is still an olympic hopeful but she actually took on gold as well for the girls over 18 uh for the 50 meter backstroke as well at a time of 29 53 and also picking up a medal for Bermuda at the Aquatic Center was Roy uh, Shepard, who's got a bronze for the 11 to 12 boys for 50 backstroke in his new personal best as well as 32 18. So a lot of backstroke swimmers we have in Bermuda right now. I didn't really realize that. I can't even float on my back. What do you mean a backstroke? You have to be really strong on these arms. This is no, a lot. Your boy ain't got it like that. Mm -mm. Nope. <laughs> Well, congrats to all those new PVs and also for the golds and the medals. Moreover, though, in the Quifter track news, now Jake Brislane, Jake Brislane won Bermuda's first medal with the track in the games in Granada, in which was described as a strong and nail-biting race coming off the heels of Bermuda. Jake Brislane was a close finish when he basically claimed bronze in the under-20 division for the 1500 meter, but he was floating right after these two Jamaicans in his heat who finished within like milliseconds of the Bermudian, uh, who broke the four-minute barrier for the the first time as well for him so again just so many more pbs are uh, coming up for our athletes so he finished three minutes 58.83 seconds so here's a quick play of that actually ending of the race because oh it was so close bermuda bermuda yeah who is in third it's brisley of bermuda who is in third by grip challenges waldron as they come to the bell lap jacqueline coke of jamaica is in fourth position and a bermuda in the top three down the home stretch they're about to come by grave up Jamaica, challenged by Brislane, up Bermuda. Cork up Jamaica on the outside as well. A three-way pattern on the home stretch. But Kamari of Bygrave steps away and Cork comes into second. The Jamaicans get one, two, and Bygrave, after the shocking disappointment of a year ago, finally has his character medal and it's gold. Good stuff, man. Almost, 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 but keep working, man. Man, that was such an intense, when I we played that video, I was like at the edge, even though I knew that he came in there, like it was just so close, like it's 358 for all of them. It's just a little bit of milliseconds around the side there. If you would have saw the whole race, he was actually traveling behind, uh, it was the Jamaican and I believe the Trinidadian who were like in first and second, and he was right behind him, but he couldn't quite get past them because they were both running in that first lane. If you're like, if you're a runner, you know that you have to really get some top speed and energy to get right around them. So that was quite, it's quite a difficult race for him, I could only imagine to so come third though with all that pressure like well done to him it was so so close so close hey, he competed with those jamaicans man hey i, I want to say something to our uh, brothers and sisters in the caribbean though, right it's bermudian not bermudan all right all right y'all you'll be doing that I'll, I'll be like put an eye in there like canadian not canadian bermudian let's get that straight my brothers all right it, indeed yeah you're right about that it's quite an often mistake that's been made. So mm -hmm. meanwhile, in some international news, so Kobe Bryant's first NBA ring from the year 2000 was sold for 972 thousand dollars surpassing the previous record of bill russell's 1957 ring sold for seven hundred and five thousand. now there was some heavy discourse as to why this historic and beloved player's ring was sold in the first place but some added information is that the golden auctions connoisseur was actually the prior owner of the ring joe bryant's joe bryant was co-bryant's father sold it to the connoisseur 
connoisseurs in like 2013 when Kobe was still in the league for about 173,000, uh, which was the record price at the time. But yeah, it's recently been sold off and now is the highest surpassing records of Bill Russell. Interesting. I know there was a lot of people saying, oh, don't sell his ring. I mean. It was already sold, truthfully. Right. And truth be told, if it's, his to, if it's his, like, you know, if he gave it to his father, however that happened, he has a right to do what he wants with it, right? Mm -hmm. He gifted it to his father. His father, um, again, sold it off in like 2013. So this is when Kobe Bryant was obviously still with us. Uh, so it was during that time and now they just recently sold it off. Yeah, again. sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So also, if anyone's going to be watching some more sports today, I know it's a heavy sports news break, but, you know, March Madness is going on and LSU versus Iowa is going to be played uh, today. So <laughs> really excited for that matchup. I'm sure a lot of people are. So definitely going to be tuning into that because the winner of that will be uh, of the Elite Eight will definitely go to the Final Four. So loving that for them. And we're looking at weather today. It's going to be some sunny periods with a couple of showers around. Windy, a little bit moderate, easing a little bit in the late mornings as well. So looking forward to some blue skies and some sunshine at some point today. And we have a high of 71 degrees. Well, real quickly, Maya, before you, you move on from March Madness, I just want to mm -hmm. say it. Um, Juju Watkins, baby, um, USC. Honestly, I can't believe she's only 18. She's about to set a record. I think she's eight points away from the most points scored by a freshman. Um, I did watch, I mean, I haven't watched it, been in tune with the men's as much, but I did watch some men's this weekend, watched um, NC State take old Duke yesterday. I like the Cinderella runs. I like the underdog. Um, but what you're going to get with Iowa and LSU today is a heavyweight tug. Um, it, it's it, like, what's her name? Flo J and, 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 and um, what's her name? Reese? The, 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 Angel Reese. Uh, and, yeah, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark. Like, mm -hmm. it's called battle man and I, I still don't see any team beating um south carolina i, I just don't south carolina's well coached Juan Staley, they're balanced um but I, i'm juju watkins is my she's, she's my she's my girl i think over at university of southern carolina but audience if you have no idea what i'm talking about tune in today honestly these these women are playing some ball yeah, okay. definitely. It's, it's going to be a matchup I've been once, like, really excited for. So, yeah, yeah. I'm definitely going to be tapped in today. <laughs> All righty. Uh, days of the year, Maya. Um, so, um, it's a International Fun at Work Day, April Fool's Day, and Harmonize Your Health Day. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, that's International Fun, fun at Work Day. Um, Maya, do you have fun at work? I suppose. Mm, okay. Um, the fact that we need an international fun at work day, um, I say this in the most serious way. If work ain't fun for you every day, and I'm not saying it's got to be perfect and great, because we're going to go through stuff. But if it's not fun for you, you probably need to revisit mm. what you do for work. Hate to be um, waking yeah. up doing something I hate every single day. That's not yep. good energy. I don't think I said Juju is at Southern, um, not so, uh, at Carolina. I said University of South, um, Southern California, I thought USC. My apologies if I did, but um, yeah, she's at USC. All right, let's take a quick break and come back. And um, we're going to ask that question about what the audience, what roots what the audience believes will um, will benefit Bermuda, new roots. So I'm thinking Atlanta and the UK, they always say that, but I want us to think deeper. Mm. You got anything in mind? No, I mean, the first thing that came to my mind when I heard about these new roots was just like, oh, how great would that have been if I was still in school? Like, you know, like just a one flight to Halifax. Um, yeah. Granted, I've, I've had some really great, like they always meet new friends and things like that um, going in to Toronto and then to Halifax, so can't complain. But at the same time, like, oh, this is really beneficial for our students. And it could be also beneficial for when, you know, they have their friends that want to come back to Bermuda as well, because it's a big, like, again, Halifax, big schools, big, like, university nation people always go there. And then again, Toronto, so many universities. And we're talking about Sounds spring break cool. earlier last month. So, you know, just options there now. Sounds cool. All right. <laughs> See you later, Maya. Have a good See you day. later. All right, my Palacio folks, we'll take this quick break. Come back and we'll ask you get what what are your thoughts? What do you think? Let us know. Let's face it, life can be a little <laughs> wild. But shopping doesn't have to be. I choose peoples. 
so that whether it's a prescription that needs to be filled, a toy for my little terror, or a gift for a new addition to the family, um, we'll see about that. Everything's available in one convenient location. Some call it Peoples. I call it my one-stop shop in the city. Peoples, we're here for you. Welcome to the new bulk store, Lindo's Next Level. Wake up in the morning with enough coffee to keep you running throughout the entire day. Your pet at home deserves the best. Stock up on dog food to keep your puppy happy. Need a quick tasty lunch at home? Your chicken nuggets will be jumping right out of the freezer. What's a movie night without popcorn? You can never have too much. Lindo's Next Level. Why go anyplace else? It took 14 days to build your business plan. Six months to build the courage to leave your day job. Three weeks to find the perfect location. It took 10 days to outfit your space just right. And one day before your first client walked in the door. All totaled, it took you a full year to get your business operational. And this is just the beginning. To the entrepreneurs, the risk takers, the people that shape our economic community, we salute you and are here for you every step of the way. BEDC, providing knowledgeable, progressive, professional, and innovative support to Bermuda businesses. Alrighty, welcome back to the big show. I'm Jamal Hartman. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medicals, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy. Don't forget to subscribe on our website, thedailyhour.com. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. All right, let's get back to the uh, question. Um, we were asking now, what new routes do you believe Bermuda Air should consider that would benefit Bermuda. So what new routes do you believe Bermuda Air should consider that would benefit Bermuda? What are your thoughts on that? And um, we've got Rick Olson, he says, many destinations are looking forward to a tourism uh, from the eclipse next week. Uh, how is Bermuda positioned? A tourism boost, he means, uh, looking forward to a tourism boost from the eclipse next week. How is Bermuda positioned? Um, you know, um, may, may, maybe that's something that uh, we can ask our friends at um, the Bermuda Tourism Authority. I don't know the answer to that, but um, point well taken, um, uh, question taken, uh, Rick Olson. Maybe we'll put it to them and ask if they have anything uh, planned uh, for the eclipse. But what are your thoughts, folks? What, what new routes do you believe Bermuda Air should consider that would benefit Bermuda? I know many people were saying uh, Toronto and Halifax. I think someone said earlier, um, I think it was Kia uh, Vene BDA said to the Caribbean, maybe. Now, this is why I actually think this makes sense um, that would benefit Bermuda. Uh, if we're trying to improve relations, now I know how some people feel about CARICOM, this or that, whatever, but would it make sense economically to bring goods from the Caribbean? You know, would it make would it help reduce the cost of um, groceries or, or the cost of living overall? I think those are the terms we need to think about as well when we're thinking about what new routes uh, do we believe could be beneficial uh, for Bermuda. So, what what new routes do you believe Bermuda should consider that would benefit Bermuda? What what are your thoughts? Um, she says Caribbean. Um, someone says Dubai. Um, James uh, Burgess uh, says Dubai. Um, do you believe Dubai? You know, are people from Dubai coming here? Um, Renee Simmons says uh, Baltimore, I'm sorry, sorry, <laughs> Miami and DC, Miami linked to uh, uh, Caribbean. Well, I think the Fort Lauderdale flight is there to kind of do that. Um, but I take your point, you know, who wants to transfer airports? And then DC, I think that's what the Baltimore flight's there, but uh, to, you know, in that area, um, the DC, Maryland, Virginia area, but, um, Point taken, uh, Renee. Uh, we've got, let's see, I'm sorry. Uh, Michelle White says, just coming in, when Karen Hendrickson brought Ghana to Bermuda last year, I was surprised how many Bermudians were already relocating there. So Ghana may be open new opportunities across the board. Are people from Ghana coming to Bermuda? 
um, Michelle White, is it sustainable? So I, again, I know you just tuned in, but the whole idea of beneficial to Bermuda is do these places have people that will come to Bermuda to benefit the economy? What is the benefit to Bermuda's economy for direct flight to Ghana? It's not about the Bermudian, it's about Bermuda. Um, Seanette Bell says Houston. Well, if I'm not mistaken, Houston is the fourth largest or most populous city in the United States. So I think there's New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, then Houston. I think I have that correct still, but that would make sense probably, right? Um, yeah, Houston would make perfect sense based on population size. I think um, there's enough big business there that can, uh, you know, Bermudians businesses and Bermuda, the uh, Bermuda Inc. could attract. So yeah, I, I like the idea of Houston, Seanette. Um, what else, folks? What, are, what, what other routes do you believe uh, Bermuda should consider that would benefit Bermuda? We've got, um, we've heard the Midwest. Someone said the Midwest earlier. That could be Chicago, which is again uh, one of the largest cities in the United States. So it looks like we've got covered, you know, some of the most important areas like New York, um, Toronto coming, right? Um, Baltimore, which represents the uh, D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. Um, so those are covered. We've got Fort Lauderdale in South Florida, which is, covers that area. Um, Emily Gildill says uh, sustainable growth is very important. They have a very uh, small fleet. So for right now, they should perhaps focus on ensuring that they can consistently service their current routes. Ah, I like that. Um, and someone actually said that to me this weekend, um, Emily Gildill. Uh, Shigarina says specifically group travel from Charlotte, big banking town. Um, yeah, I think that's where Bank of America's headquartered too, right? Um, but I, I guess we already have a flight from um, Charlotte with the American. So, you know, that said, I mean, we already have flights from uh, the UK and Atlanta and people are screaming for additional options because of the pricing. So, Again, if, if, if they'll help with price, if they'll help with um, getting more people to Bermuda, I'm all for it. But uh, thank you for that. All right, folks, we're going to take a final break. Um, after this break, someone's going to win the opportunity to win later this week. So someone will be eligible for, for a prize later this week if they get today's answer correctly. Um, but I just want to give a big shout out again. Um, happy birthday to our colleague, Sancha. Um, and also, it is April 1st. Uh, the beginning of quarter uh, two. And we just want to uh, give a huge thanks to our new uh, partners for the Daily Hour, uh, Friesenbrook and uh, Noah's Ark, both are new, our newest partners. So again, that brings us to a total of nine or 10. We've got the BAC Group, uh, Medical House Lindos, People's Pharmacy, NMAC, uh, the BDC, uh, Mailboxes, uh, Bermuda Trivia, Noah's Ark, and Friesenbrook. So uh, thank you to all those uh, uh, companies and organizations who support uh, what we're doing to continue to have these most important community conversations that we believe are a way of improving our community and our home um, that we love. So uh, stick with us, take a quick break, uh, come back to you immediately following this. Hi there, welcome to Madaku House. We're located at number six Bakery Lane. I can't wait to show you all of the great stuff that we carry. Come on inside, let's see. Let's kick it off in the footwear department. When it comes to footwear, we carry functional, comfortable, orthopedic and waterproof shoes. We have construction shoes, golf shoes, shoes for walking, shoes for boating. We even have shoes for pickleball. We have shoes for everyone. With brands by Skechers, Atrax, Propay, Easy Street, Nursemates, Clogs, Avenger, Cherokee, Cat, Frog Talks and DeWalt. The list goes on. Take a look at our workwear for construction workers and tradesmen. Durable, stretchable in all the right places and plenty of options for tools and accessories. Pair with our wide range of tough and comfortable footwear, you can't go wrong. Long days, long shifts, you no longer have to endure comfortable underwear. Designed by Narcissus, we now offer premium undergarments by Swoop that are unique, fun, comfortable and functional. The only underwear you'll ever want to wear. Who says high quality functional products can't be stylish and comfortable at the same time? Speaking of stylish, we also have top quality running, walking and workout apparel by Skechers in a variety of sizes for men and women. Cool, breathable and dry. With our wide selection of Skechers footwear, you'll look great before, during and after your workout. 
As you can see, Medical House really is a one-stop shop for everybody. We can't wait to see you. You'll be surprised at everything we have to offer at our huge new retail and wholesale location on Bakery Lane. All righty, welcome back to the big show. Thanks again to the BAC Group of Companies, Medicals, Lenders, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring we can have these conversations with you on a daily basis. If you haven't already, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like on whatever platform you're tuned in on. Um, please make sure you share these conversations with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Let's make sure that Bermuda actually receives um, some love as well. Um, make sure we uh, get this into their hands. Let them know what you think. And so everyone who hasn't taken Bermuda yet, um, it's a great experience. It was a great experience for me. I've taken it three times. Um, it's been a great experience. So hopefully more of us um, can, uh, you know, try to take it. Um, it is time for the Daily Play brought to you by Bermuda Trivia, now available at stores throughout Bermuda. Follow Bermuda Trivia on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to find out why it's Bermuda's favorite trivia game. All right. And so who said it? Who said it? And um, yeah, I'll just say this is a uh, late famous athlete, tennis player. Quote, racism is not an excuse to not do your best, end quote. Who said it? First one that showed up on my screen was NTS. So NTS, you will be in this week's draw. Um, I, <laughs> it's funny. Um, I don't know if Dr. King um, played tennis. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. <laughs> I need to get the shields. So maybe you didn't hear me. Um, but Arthur Ashe was. He said, "Quote: Racism is not an excuse to not do your best." End quote. Uh, as long as we're able and um, you know willing, um, shouldn't be any excuse not for us to do our best. Uh, we can what we can control is the attitude that we put forth. Um, but real quickly, let's wrap up today's conversation on the um, on Bermuda. You know, I, I I love these conversations. I think it's you know we always have these conversations about the things that bring us down, the things that um, you know hold us back, and and the uh, politics of the day. I continue to say that Bermuda is giving us something to be excited about. Um, you know, Bermuda, a local based airline um, that is doing two things, satisfying our needs for more people into Bermuda, but also giving Bermudians the opportunity to actually get away and um, in a cost effective way, should they need to, um, giving us a ways to get to places for medical treatment as well. So it does play a role for Bermudians. So, I'll just continue to say what I've said on this show numerous times is we need this airline to work for Bermuda. And so if you have an opportunity, um, yes, there's going to be challenges with anything that's new or any business, but um, let's work through them. Let's fight through them. We've put up with a lot from others all these years. Let's give them a chance. Let's give them a shot and let's see what's next. Um, they are growing fast, but I, uh, as Emily Gildilla says, some people would love to see uh, while they're growing. Um, you know, some things improve on the other side. So again, if you haven't already, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like, make sure you share the conversation with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Let's keep these conversations going. Let's spread them. Let's ensure that everyone who needs to um, knows what we're discussing on these episodes of uh, Bermuda's Daily Talk Show. Um, and your daily inspiration is the author Ash quote, uh, racism is not an excuse to not do your best. All right, time to roll out. Uh, don't forget to subscribe on our website. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Thanks again to the BAC Group of Companies, Medical Health Windows, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we're able to do this with you on a daily basis. As always, we appreciate you. We love you. And we thank you for making us part of your daily routine. If all goes well, we'll be back to do this again with you tomorrow. I'm Jamal Hart, and please do make it a safe and a great day. We are is out. Peace.